Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy So What Day. I hope you're having a great start to your week. We have less than a week to go before Christmas. Um, so for those of you celebrating Christmas, I hope that you are ready, or at least um, finding some time to get yourself ready, uh, because it will be here before we know it. So I hope that you've got some gifts under the tree, and um, if not, I have a couple, well, I have a quick project today that you could use as a last minute gift idea because you could be done with this in no time. You can personalize it in a number of different ways and uh, you can make it as easy or as complicated as you wish. It also makes a really great craft idea. Um, I've been giving you a couple of different craft ideas if you happen to have little ones who are about to be, or maybe they already are on winter break from school. It's something they can do with their hands. It's um, something, you know, festive and it keeps them busy and off the technology for a little while. So I definitely promote teaching a little sewing project. Um, and these are supplies that you might already have on hand. And if not, they're easy to grab uh, so that little fingers can do um, some, if not all, of the work for the projects today. Um, these also can carry you into Valentine's Day decorating, uh, the little hearts that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. So uh, if you're someone like me who um, finds it a little difficult to get the tree down right after Christmas, then just Decorate it for Valentine's Day and have yourself a heart tree for a little while. <laughs> and I'll show you how uh, those come together for that. So thanks everybody for saying hello and good morning in the chat. Be sure to do so because I have a great door prize for one lucky viewer who is watching and commenting, giving me those great emojis. And uh, you will be entered to win a pack of holiday felty. That's right. I'm going to be giving away one of our holiday felty assortments. And the holiday felty assortment has uh, sheets of greens, sheets of reds, sheets of black and white. And you can actually use the holiday assortment for the project I'm making today. So you don't have to make quintessential holiday goodies with this holiday assortment. Um, you can make other projects as well. It just has these great colors that we associate with the holiday season. All right, so nice to see a lot of you recognizing almost everybody's name at this point this morning. Uh, so good morning and welcome. Uh, you might notice I have um, quite a mess going on behind me, and that is because yesterday... I uh, had a little rehearsal for our New Year's Eve so along that's coming up. Uh, we only have a couple of weeks before New Year's Eve even. this It's crazy how fast it goes, isn't it? I mean, it's just the holiday season begins and it's a whirlwind of activities and it's such a great time of year, but it does go by fast. So in a couple weeks, we will be joining you live on sewingonline.sulky.com for our 2023 New Year's Eve Sew Along event. This is a four hour event because we will be taking you through this brand new Veronica bag from start to finish in real time. You will see this bag come together and you can sew along with us. And we've built in some breaks along the way so that uh, you can catch up, ask questions. Um, if anything is confusing to you, we are right here with you along for the ride. And before we start the bag tutorial or the bag demo rather, the bag making portion of the afternoon, I'm gonna be taking you through how to create these really great snap tabs and charms that you can use to uh, decorate your Veronica bag or you can use them as standalone little key rings and charms. You can gift them. Uh, they make great gifts for any time of year. And they make really great party favors as well. 
Um, I know my girls are super into the skating parties. Uh, these have totally come back from the 80s. I'm super excited about it. Love me a skating party. But anyways, these cute charms would be so great as a little party favor for a skating party or a birthday party of any kind. Um, the theme of this year's event is totally 80s, uh, but that really just means that Jessica and I are going to be wearing our scrunchies and our lace gloves, and we're going to get into the spirit of the 80s. Um, and the bag has a little bit of an 80s vibe with the angled front flap, um, but it certainly isn't, you know, pigeonholed into this, you know, totally 80s um look, right? It's just a nod to the 80s. We're just giving a subtle nod to that. Um, and with our mixtape and lightning bolt designs, um, you can be as 80s as you want, or you can uh, leave your machine embroidery for the snap tabs and use them as key rings and things like that. Um, Kathy is saying the charms are cute. Would be cool as an earring size too. That's a really cute idea. Love that. All right, uh, Elise says, I wish there was a video to watch so I can wrap my head around this before New Year's Eve. I don't think I will be able to keep up when it is live. Well, thank you for that comment. So um, if you aren't able to keep up, it's totally fine because as we are live streaming, on the back end of things, the entire event is being recorded. So once the live stream ends, the recording will live on the event page and you can revisit it after the live stream, review anything that you might have missed. You can pause, you can fast forward, anything you need to do to get through the project. And that way, if you want to join us live and ask questions that you might have, but maybe not so along in real time, you can come back and watch through portions of the video that you might be stuck on um, or play it and then pause it until you catch up. Also during the live stream, you will be able to pause the video as well. It's just then you won't necessarily be live with us. So when we are answering questions, you might not see your question for a while if you have paused us. Does that make sense? So there's lots of different ways to watch the content and to participate in the event. You don't necessarily have to be there live for the whole four hours trying to sew along in a frantic way. We definitely don't want that because sewing is fun, right? Sewing shouldn't be stressful. So that's the whole idea. We just want to have an experience together on New Year's Eve doing something that we love sewing, right? And then having a fun new bag and some new charms that we can even wear out that night, maybe if we're going to a New Year's Eve party or doing something else that evening, uh, you'll have a new bag to show for it. So pretty fun. And this is the fourth year we have been doing this event. And in my opinion, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, at least it gets a little bit easier every year uh, for us behind the scenes. Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's a lot, a lot of work, but we love doing it and we're really excited to finally bring this to you all. So I have my Veronica bag in various stages, um, but it's nothing is sewn. I'm saving that for the day of, so I can sew along with you as well. Um, it's just, we were kind of going through the motions yesterday to make sure that our timing is right for you all um, and that we're focusing on the things that we think you might need extra help on, um, slowing down when we think that you're gonna need a little bit more time, all of those good things. So it was pretty exciting to hop on with Jessica Barrera of uh, Sally Tomato and give it a run through. And it just made me even more excited to share it with all of you in a couple of weeks. So make sure you are registered because once you register for the event, you will get the digital pattern that you can download to your computer. You can print it out if you want to have the written instructions next to you while we are sewing. You'll also get your embroidery design files, and you do need to choose the type of embroidery you want to do and the design that you want to do on the day of the event. Uh, we aren't going to be combining designs into one hooping. We're going to be focusing on one design. I'll show you um, how the flat fill designs can be stitched. 
I will show you how the snap tab comes together in real time. And I will show you how to create a charm as well. So if you want to uh, have your bag uh, with machine embroidery on it, you will want to choose one of the three flat fill designs, have that loaded into your machine, ready to go, have your hoop next to you. Uh, they all fit in a four by four hoop, but you can use any hoop above a four by four that you want. I just recommend using that smallest hoop size for the chosen design, which would be that four by four hoop. Um, my smallest hoop is a 120 by 120. So that's what I'll be using for the demo or for the day of. Um, so if you want embroidery on your bag, you'll choose a flat fill design. If you wanna do one of the snap tabs, which is this that um, has a snap, it snaps around this little D-ring swivel clip. So you can actually remove it, use it for other things, switch out your charms whenever you feel like it. You'll load a snap tab design. If you want to create one of the charms, which I have here, we have our lightning bolt charm, our skate charm, and our mixtape charm. If you want to create one of the charms that goes around one of these gate rings or key rings, then you will choose one of these and load it into your machine so it's ready to go. So on the day of, we are going to start with machine embroidery, which I think is really helpful because if you need some extra time cutting out your pieces, which yes, we want you to cut out your pieces before the event, so that's why you need to register, get the pattern, read it through, go to the last page to see the pattern layout so that you can cut out all of your pieces onto your fabric, have them ready to go. It's also helpful to label those, maybe with a sticky note, something like this. Label them on the back side with a sticky note. Um, that way, when Jessica's taking you through the construction of the bag and she says exterior piece A, you can just grab exterior piece A and it's labeled on the back side and ready to go for you. So all of these things in preparation are gonna help you stay with us on the day of and be able to keep up as well. That's the idea anyways. But we understand if you need extra time um, and we are going to build in some pockets of time for that as well. So um, another thing I wanted to mention is we have this handy dandy checklist for the event. So if you registered for the event early, you will find this checklist on the event page. It's a PDF download. It'll say grab the event checklist or download event checklist. You click on that bar and it will download directly to your computer so you can pull it up, print it out, check off everything that you might need for the day of. And if you registered a little bit later, maybe in the last couple of weeks, you got this checklist with your confirmation email as well. But it does live on the event page, so you can grab it up at any time um, and check it out to make sure that you have the notions, the tools, anything we're gonna talk about that is not uh, included in the kit. So um, for example, a couple of things I think are really handy that you're gonna wanna have um, something to poke our holes for the little charms. So if you're creating a charm, see how we have to poke a hole so that the gate ring will fit through our charm? So I am using this great Sally Tomato uh, rotary hole punch. I can't believe how many times I've used this thing. This is available at sallytomato.com and it has all these different hole uh, diameter settings. So you just flip it around uh, depending on the size hole that you need. This is also handy for attaching the Chicago screws. You can't really see them on this picture, but on the sides of the bag, there's a decorative detail where these Chicago screws go in. They look like little studs um, or little rivets, rivet caps kind of. Um, it's just a cool little detail to add to your bag, and you're going to need to punch holes um, along a little strip of fabric to accommodate your Chicago screws. So I want to make sure that you guys have something on hand to create those holes. Otherwise, you're going to get to this point, 
and say to yourself, oh my goodness, I don't have that right next to me. Now they're going to go forward and I'm not going to be ready. So this is a really great tool. Um, again, this is at sallytomato.com. They may sell them elsewhere as well. Uh, but I grabbed one up a couple of years ago. We were doing a different Sally Tomato bag and this tool was recommended and I was like, I'm just going to buy it. It's 20 bucks or 30 bucks, something like that. I can't believe how many times I've used it, especially for things like these charms. All right. Kathy is saying, what are Chicago screws? So if you grabbed up a New Year's Eve kit, let me see if I can find one. Um, it came with all the hardware that you need for the bag. A Chicago screw looks like this. This is the part that you see on the right side of the bag. So it's like a decorative stud. On the wrong side of the bag, it looks like this. So you also need a screwdriver for the event. And when we were doing our rehearsal yesterday, you know, we were just running through. We didn't do the actual sewing yet. And Jessica said, grab your screwdriver. And I thought to myself, oh, no, I didn't get one close by me. So I'm frantically running around, as I do here on So What So Often, <laughs> looking for a screwdriver. I'm like, I have to have one nearby. So I went into my serger accessories and I grabbed my serger screwdriver which was perfect for the Chicago screws. You can use a flathead screwdriver of any size, or if you have a small Phillips head, that will work too. So see how this works for either screwdriver type? So you wanna make sure that you have a little screwdriver or a regular size or go into your, you might have a small screwdriver in with your sewing accessory box as well. So make sure that you have that on hand and this is all in the checklist as well so you want a hole punch if you don't want to grab up a hole punch you can use an awl um i have an awl right here very very sharp point what i want to mention about using an awl instead of a hole punch is you can see the difference in the diameter here this is the hole we're going to create for the snap charms or for the charms, and this is what an awl is going to give you. So if you're gonna use an awl, you may need to poke the hole and then snip into the hole, you know, like an X into the hole so that your hardware can go through the, the tiny hole that the awl is gonna give you. So it is suitable if you have an awl and you don't have a hole punch, you can make it work. Um, you might have something else that can create a hole as well. Um, I happen to have a rivet setter that is just a generic rivet center setter that I've had for a long time. And you can actually poke holes in it or puncture holes with it. So the inside of this rivet set setter is an open hole. So if you put this over the micro suede and hit it with a hammer, you can poke a hole in your micro suede fabric and that will be suitable to fit your gate ring. Um, but the gate ring is rather thick, okay? So you see the hole that you're going to get with this tool as well. So you may also need to snip into that hole just a little bit to fit the gate ring. Or you can use a more generic like key ring type hardware um, and you will have no problem, you know, fitting your charm onto that hardware. It's much thinner than the gate ring is. So those are just some options for the different hardware that you want to have on hand. Speaking of hammer, you need to have some kind of hammer so that you can set your snaps if you're creating a snap tab charm. So your kit, if you purchased one, also comes with 20 snaps. And each snap has four parts to it, okay? So you have plenty of snaps to practice with. And I highly, highly suggest you practice your snap on a scrap piece of fabric 
After you cut out all the pieces that you need for your bag, you should have some small scraps left over. You have 20 snaps. You have enough to do a couple of test runs before you create your finished uh, snap tab. That being said, you also need a snap setter to set your snaps. So for these line 20 snaps that are included in the kit, there's a specific line 20 snap setter that you can get. It comes with this little anvil piece. It also comes with the setter tool. Notice how this setter tool has a pointed end on it. You see that pointed end? It's kind of hard to see the little pointy end, but the pointy end fits into the portion of the snap that you are setting. So for example, here's the pretty side of the snap. And on the other side, notice how there's this little pokey outy piece, right? When you are setting this into its partner piece, this snap setter tool will fit into that little portion. And when you tap it lightly with a hammer a couple times, it sets it into place. You can use other snap setters as well. I have even tried working with these snaps and using, let me grab it here, and using a cam snap setter. Now I will say it's not the greatest because the cam snap setter is specifically made for the plastic cam snaps. So when you're working with these higher end uh, metal snaps that have these great finishes that go along with all the other finishes of our bag, it's a little bit different experience and you need to have um, a lighter hand with this setter tool. So it will work if you have one of these, but again, do a test before you come to the sew along and start working on your finished mic or your, you know, your beautiful micro suede. Not to mention, you will have done all this embroidery and setting the snap is the last step. So I would hate for your snap to get marred or something problematic to happen to it um, because you haven't practiced or, you know, it's a little bit confusing or you're using a tool that will work but isn't necessarily recommended for that hardware. You see where I'm going with it? So just test a couple snaps. Do three, four, or five. I mean, you're getting 20 in the kit. Um, that also gives you plenty of snaps to create lots more snap tabs as well. Uh, so you could create tons of these and gift them away for Valentine's gifts, or maybe you have some birthdays after the new year, things like that. So I'll go ahead and disclose that I have a snap mistake. And the reason I am really trying to drive this home is because I did all this beautiful embroidery and then I accidentally had my anvil, see how there's a pointy side to the anvil and there's a smooth side. I accidentally put my snap on the pointy end, the pretty side of my snap, and I gave it a tap before I realized that it was on the pointy side. So look what happened to my snap. Totally mangled, terrible, totally ruined. So I caution you to really test things out, test out the tools you're gonna use so that when it comes time to set our snaps, um, and I, I will give you extra time to do it. I will try to drive home this whole, you know, do a test snap on the day of, um, but I just wanted to make sure uh, that you all are aware of the mistakes and we can, recover from them, maybe even before the event. Uh, Betsy says, Chicago screws are not easily available. That, thank you for mentioning. Um, so sallytomato.com has Chicago screws in like four different finishes. They use them a lot in bag making to um, put decorative studs or, you know, the Chicago screws um, into straps and things like that. So I think this is the first time that they're used down the side of a bag. 
and it really adds this designer touch to it. If you're having trouble finding them, you can certainly omit them from the bag design. Um, Jessica's actually going to talk about that as well. You don't have to add the Chicago screws. Um, but if you bought a kit, they do come with the kit. So you'll get, um, and you even get a few extras too. So if you want to create a handle as well as a strap for your bag, you can use the two extra um, Chicago screws at the ends of your handle to kind of hold the small short end of the handle in place and just kind of tie in that look from the side of the bag as well. So thank you for mentioning that. All right, Amy says, I miss my mixtapes. All right, well now you can create one out of needle and thread <laughs> and have your own mixtape. It even says awesome on it, so cute. And I really wanna thank Parker on the Porch. All of these great designs are from Parker on the Porch. You can check out their fabulous machine embroidery designs in the Hoop Projects, lots more snap tabs and charms at parkeronthe-porch.com. We have worked with Parker in the Porch on the past. We did a boba tea stuffy and a boba tea uh, zipper pouch for a free webcast this past year, and it was super duper popular. That's another one where if you miss that webcast, you should really register for it and watch it um, because you can create one of these as a last minute Christmas gift idea if you've got you know nieces, nephews, friends who love the boba tea trend. I know my girls aren't getting over it anytime soon. I keep telling them to save their allowance because um, boba tea is uh, digging into the college fund, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but at any rate, they are super into it. They loved that project. And um, you can make it all in the hoop of your embroidery machine. So you can really finish it in an afternoon's time. And it's also made out of sulky Felty. Some of the portions of the boba tea uh, zipper pouch and stuffy are made with sulky felty. Um, so we just keep, you know, making more and more things out of the sulky felty because it's so convenient. It is manufactured to take a lot of needle penetrations and accept a lot of thread without buckling and puckering. It's just magical stuff, and it has a really great hand to it. It's not like that stiff craft felt. Um, so it's really nice for applique, for creating zipper pouches, things where you don't need to have uh, finished edges. So, you know, fabrics that don't fray, if you need those for a project, like an ornament that we're going to make today, uh, felty just really comes in handy. And that is our special door prize for So What Today. I will be giving away a holiday assortment of Felty, our Felty holiday assortment pack to one lucky uh, viewer who is watching and commenting and giving me those great emojis and engaging with me here this afternoon. You will be automatically eligible to win. I will pick one winner and you can use that holiday Felty for lots of projects, not just holiday or quote unquote Christmas projects. Um, you'll just get lots of greens and reds and white and black sheets of felty. All right. So without further ado, I will show you today's project is our trio of folk hearts. And this is really meant as like a Valentine uh, decor project, but it also does double duty as ornaments. And as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a little mini pink tree that you like to decorate up for Valentine's Day, or maybe your tree stays up all year and you decorate it for different occasions, that's still a thing for sure, then you can add some felty heart ornaments to it. Um, but the uh, free pattern is at sulky.com. You can grab that up. You'll get all the templates for these really cute bird appliques included with the digital pattern. All you have to do is add this pattern to your cart at sulky.com, go through the checkout process. It will show up as $0, so complete your checkout for $0. And then the pattern PDF will go into your account at sulky.com and you can download it, print it, cut out your applique templates, and you can create tons of different heart ornaments. 
So in the pattern, we direct you to uh, stitch three different heart ornaments and string them together. So this would look really cute on your front door um, as we transition from all of our holiday decorating into Valentine's Day. It also looks really cute in a doorway or hung up in your kitchen or something like this. Very, very cute as is. Or you can add hanging loops to them individually and create little individual heart ornaments. So if you need a last minute gift idea, you can turn these little hearts into more of a holiday style for the Christmas tree. You can use that holiday felty assortment and create them in red, white, and green. Um, all different ways to personalize these for whatever you want to make them for. So these are really, really cute. You need a little bit of fiber fill. You need some felty, of course. You need some sulky perfect applique fusible web. That's right. You can fuse the felty. It is polyester, so it's washable. It's fusible. So easy to sew. A much better alternative to wool felt because it's less expensive. Again, you can wash it. You can use removable fabric markers on it. It's so forgiving and a really great product. Also, you will need some sulky 12 weight cotton petites thread. That's what we're gonna be using for the hand applique and embroidery elements on the bird. But I'll also give you some tips if you would rather do machine applique, uh, we certainly can do it that way as well. I just suggest that you do a little bit of hand embroidery accents, maybe a French knot for the bird eyes um, or some little elements like this. Or you can certainly dive into your bead or button jar and add little elements using those materials rather than hand embroidery. So again, tons of different ways to look at this project, to interpret it for how you want to make it and what you're most comfortable sewing. Make the grandkids, nieces, nephews, children go into the bead and button jar and decorate their own little birdie. And then you can hand sew it onto the heart or have them do it. Teach them how to do it and they can create their own ornament. This would be a great project for winter break or if you're having kids over to the house for your holiday feast and they need something to do to keep them busy while the adults are, you know, having conversations and, uh, you know, preparing the meal, etc. I also think this is a great idea. Everybody can create their own heart, whether they're a kid or an adult at the table, maybe after you've had your feast, and everybody can swap and give one to each other. And then you have a really cute uh, gift uh, that everybody gets to take home that is from somebody else. So I think that's a really cute idea too, a little ornament swap, and they can make it in the spirit of Valentine's Day or in a Christmas style as well. Leslie says, oh boy, do I have beads and buttons? I hear ya. <laughs> Love that. Okay. Deb says, it looks like the hearts are hanging on bakery string. I'll have to get a pie. They are on some twine that you would use for like gift tags or maybe bakery string. So it makes it really easy. You can also use some yarn. I mean, you can use some ribbon and little bits and bobbles. This is what this is all about. All right. So first off, you're going to grab up this pattern. You're going to print off all the heart templates and all the applique templates. The hearts are layered a little bit on the upper and middle heart that you see here. You could see there's a larger heart that makes up the ornament that you're going to stuff. And then there's another little heart that is fused on top. So we've got some layered applique pieces going on here. And you'll find all the little pieces in the applique templates within this pattern as well. And yes, you will also get the full instructions for the project. So no need to take any notes or remember anything that I've said here today because you'll get it all when you download this pattern as well. All right, so first thing we need to do is transfer those applique templates onto the paper side of our perfect applique fusible web. And then you can fuse the pieces onto the felty. Just pick a wrong side for the felty because both sides look great. You might find that one side is a little bit duller than the other. That will be your wrong side. 
or you might not be able to tell the difference at all. So just pick one side and go with it for your applique pieces. And you can label them if you want. It makes it a little bit easier when you're layering the appliques to know, oh, this is a wing piece and not a head, things like this. So you can label them F as in here, which is one of the wings, um, or you can just kind of try and be organized and make little stacks. If you also wanted to make a little ornament kit for everybody at your holiday feast or holiday party, this is a great idea to have these pieces already cut out or already fused, of course, onto the fusible web, and then they can cut out their little pieces and create their bird. Remember, you only have to do one ornament per person. Give them one spool of thread or put some thread in the middle of the table, maybe already even threaded on some needles. That makes it even easier, less daunting for people. Um, I know if I am doing a craft, I like to do crafts and games, of course, on New Year, um, excuse me, on Christmas Eve, um, makes everybody um, kind of feel like they're in it together, right? So uh, there are some times where people say, oh, I could never do this. What am I doing? But everybody's doing it. So they try and they have a great time anyways. You know, pour some wine, put on some Christmas tunes. <laughs> Everybody will join in on the fun. All right. Crystal says, I can scan this into my scan and cut um, and I can add machine embroidery. More than one way to skin a cat. Exactly. Love that. That's why we come together here too, is to just kind of have a melting pot of ideas for all these projects that I'm uh, showcasing. And then it's just like a springboard to take you in all different directions based on the sewing that you like to do. So I love that idea as well. So you're going to fuse your fusible web uh, applique templates to your different felty colors. And then we're going to start layering them and doing some hand embroidery. But again, if hand embroidery is not your thing, you can certainly set up your machine for a machine applique stitch. You can set it up for a blanket stitch and blanket stitch along all of the edges of the little appliques. You can choose a decorative stitch. Maybe you even have a little bird face stitch or something that you can add or a little sun uh, stitch, or, you know, I have a snowman stitch on my machine that is so cute that, you know, would look like it's in the background or something like this. You could maybe change your bird into a cardinal and you would have a really pretty winter scene on your heart. So again, lots of different ideas. So these, this picture just has some little indicators of where you would want to add some extra stitch detailing. So see how there's a little zigzag line along the wing piece. You could set your machine up for a zigzag and just add some little details to the wings. You could do this with, you know, handwork, but just these little details that take it from just kind of ordinary and give it a little more personality. You can do a little uh, button for the bird beak or a button or a bead for the eye, all kinds of things. Just put some things on the table and just kind of have fun with it. So you'll add all of your elements. Here are just some ideas for some other elements to try with the other heart. So now we've got our bird. She's got a wing. You can add some little running stitches along the wing and also experiment with different edges on your scissors. You could use pinking shears. You can use wavy blade shears. Um, it just, you know, makes it almost looks like a little Valentine doily, you know, Talk about 80s. I remember using lots of doilies to create Valentines when I was in school. <laughs> so this just gives it sort of a vibe like that. And then the little dots represent some French knots. But again, sew on some beads here. Um, add some pom-pom fringe, trims, anything that you like, and stitch it all up. Here is the third bird idea. This one has a little eyelash. Uh, some little blanket stitch edging on the bird. So these are all the templates that will come with your free pattern. You can use these birds or create your own or just do a series of hearts layered on each other with some beads and buttons and bobbles and trims. All right, so once you have the front of all of your hearts embellished and sewn and done up to your liking, you will take the back heart piece for each one of those hearts you just embellished 
and put them face uh, down on your work station. And this is where that twine or ribbon or trim comes into play. So if you want to do three hearts that are connected, this is what your piece of string or ribbon, etc., will look like. You will create a little hanging loop at the top. Make sure that the end of your loop is at least an inch inside of that upper heart, and then just string it down um, the back side of those hearts. Then you will put the front sides over the top. And in the pattern, these are hand sewn together using a running stitch for a little bit more handmade look. And then you'll leave an opening in each heart so that you can stuff it with fiber fill and then continue sewing it uh, together. But again, take these over to your machine. Make sure that where they are connected um, with the little string or ribbon that you backstitch a couple of times along that area. Leave your opening for turning, stuff it with some fiber fill so till it's nice and plump, and then finish the stitching. Super easy, super simple. You don't have to turn anything right side out because we don't need uh, to finish the edges of felty. It's not going to fray. So you just stitch a little bit inside the outer perimeter, which is why using pinking shears or a wavy blade or something like that is extra fun and adds a little bit more uh, embellishment to the finished heart. Also, when you are stuffing it with the fiber fill, try using the sulky turning tool. This is our multi-purpose turning tool. Love it. Uh, you can stuff your heart much easier and get the fiber fill nice and snug inside of the seam line so that it fills out the seam and then you can continue stuffing it until it's as plump as you want and then finish off with the last little bit of stitching. So this is a really great tool to have on hand for this and a number of different projects. I like to use the smaller end as a stiletto at my ironing station or at my machine when I'm kind of sewing those little areas and I don't want to get my fingertips too close to the needle. This is really great for that as well. Under 10 bucks, great tool to have on hand. So that's our finished heart trio. And again, you can uh, make them individual ornaments, or you can sew them together like this really easily. Um, this kind of has like a jingle door knocker vibe to me. So you could even have your string poking out of that bottom heart and put some little beads or something on there so that when you open and shut the door, it makes a little bit of a noise. Um, that would be a really cute embellishment too. You could add um, maybe a little uh, thread tassel to the bottom of the heart uh, to just kind of give it a little bit more finished look. So uh, really cute, really simple, um, but you can make it as impressive as you want. Add some glitz and glam with some sequins or glitter spray. I mean, you can make these super crafty or you can make them really quilty. Um, lots of different ways to look at this and to complete it how you want to complete it. And it would be really fun to gift these around the table in a little kit. Wouldn't take you too long to create a little kit for each person. Have somebody thread a bunch of needles, put them in the middle of the table on a pin cushion. I mean, I can see it now. This is like my Norman Rockwell dream of everybody sitting around the table and sewing a little heart ornament. <laughs> I love it. The more I talk about it, the more I want to do it. We'll see if I can make it happen. <laughs> but it would be really cute to see everybody's interpretation of their heart and what they bring to the table. Maybe there's, you know, more intermediate sewers that you're having over or people who have never touched a needle before. And it would be really cool to see what everybody comes up with. Love that. All right, Leslie says, how about adding a bell? Great idea, love it. Sue says, love the little birds, so cute. Great idea for adding a tassel. Um, these would be great to make as gifts and hang on my neighbor's doors for Valentine's Day. You know what, Betsy, that is, thank you for saying that because you just reminded me of another initiative I wanted to talk about today. And um, I have a blog post that's going to come out about this as well with some more information. 
But there's a really great organization called I Found a Quilted Heart. And basically how it started is these sisters were hiking in the mountains somewhere. I can't remember right now. And they came upon this little stuffed heart. And on the heart was a little tag and it said, I need a home. It's kind of like when you see those painted rocks places, people want you to take the rock. And if you need a little comfort from the rock, you you take it and then you can place it in another location for somebody else to find. And it just kind of brings a smile to your face, brings joy to you, even if for just a moment. Some people will write little inspirational messages on the rocks. This was a big thing around the COVID era as well. Um, my kids were painting rocks and we were doing anything to pass the time here, you know, <laughs> crammed up in our house and all that. But at any rate, the I Found a Quilted Heart initiative is all about spreading the joy, leaving hearts for people to find that you have made out of scraps, out, made them as quilty as you want, maybe even made them out of sulky felty using our cute little heart ornament pattern. But this would be a great use for that initiative. So the whole idea is that you make a heart of any kind using your sewing talents. It can be as big or as small as you want, probably on the smaller side, I would say. And then you leave it for somebody to find, a stranger. There are a few different rules to abide by um, because these sisters have been doing this since 2014. So they really have the hang of it now. And also on their website, on their blog site, um, there's a little tag that you can print out and add to your heart. So if you want to make a pocket on the back of your heart, um, you would really just make two heart pieces for the back and cut one in half, basically, and then layer those together. And then you'll have a little pocket on the back of your heart. You can stick the tag in there, or you can just sew the tag, you know, with a little whip stitch onto the heart. And the tag says, you know, I hope this brings you joy or, you know, I need a home. It says something like this so that when somebody finds it, they know that they are meant to keep it. There's some other rules to abide by, like don't leave these in airports. Bad idea. Um, don't leave them on public lands. It's illegal. You know, things like this to keep in mind. So in the blog post that's coming out in a few days, um, I kind of outline all of this. So you'll be able to read it in a few days. But I did want to mention that this is a great use for these hearts. If you have tons of scraps or if you do have kids that come over or even just friends that come over, you do a little sewing bee over the holidays or a little holiday party, something. So it'd be a great little activity. Explain the initiative to everybody. They can either keep their heart or they can gift it away. And it's such a great thing that brings people a little bit of joy. And they can even grab the joy that they need from it and then go deposit it somewhere else for somebody else to find in the future. So it's just such a heartwarming, pardon the pun, uh, way to make somebody happy with your sewing talents. Um, so this is a really great uh, thing to explore. It's called I Found a Quilted Heart. And you can Google it or you can wait for our sulky blog to come out and I will let you know of all the resources to uh, get in touch with these people if you want to grab up that tag or get the full list of rules and the whole story of how this happened. It's really fascinating and such a great, great idea. So um, yes, I did want you to know about that. So thank you, Betsy. She also says, fun idea for a neighborhood tea and craft party. I love that too. All right. Let's just make sure I am all caught up on the comments here because I have something else to share with you. Um, oh, Deb says, I have left quilted hearts around town with the I found a quilted heart tags. So much fun. I have three ready to go right now. It's so great. It's just like being a little neighborhood Santa, you know, you don't need the credit and you just, you know that you're bringing somebody else some joy. Um, so really fun idea. All right. So as I mentioned, I have one more thing to let you all know. I'm really excited about this. And speaking of hearts, 
Our next free webcast is happening January 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are going to make earrings in the hoop of our embroidery machine using freestanding lace techniques. And these earrings are all heart-shaped, but they have different motifs. You can wear them for Valentine's Day. You can give them as gifts. They work for Valentine's Day and beyond because who doesn't want to wear a pair of heart earrings? You can make dangles. You can make big earrings with thread tassels. You can make smaller stud earrings. We will include all of the hardware that you need to create so many different pairs of earrings in the kit that we have for this event. You can see you will get Fabrisolvi, which is the stabilizer we are going to use to build these freestanding lace hearts. You will get a pack of embroidery needles. You will get six spools of sulky thread in all of these great colors that take you into spring. And all of this earring hardware. I venture to guess you will have enough earring hardware to make 10 pairs of earrings of different kinds. There's also a bunch of different jump rings included so that you can connect some different earring files and personalize them however you wish. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different styles you will be able to create with the design files that are included with this kit. We will be joined by Sheila Ryan of Designs by Baby Moon for this event. And she has really specialized in these freestanding lace earrings. It's unbelievable the amount of earring styles that you, she has for you to choose from on her website. They are so incredibly adorable. Back around Cinco de Mayo uh, time this past year, I made some chili pepper earrings from her website. And I believe I went through a little bit of how I made those um, on So What here. And you guys went bananas over it. They're so cute. I absolutely love them. And these heart designs Sheila has created just for this webcast. There are nine earring designs that will go into this kit. You can also purchase the earring designs separately as a download. Um, so either way, you can grab up the designs with the kit or grab up the designs alone, but you also need to register for the webcast because if you do, she is giving away a heart earring design so that you can try it out and have an extra bonus design to create even more earrings with. I mean, this just deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I've been waiting so long to tell you all about this event. And it is coming up rather soon in three or four weeks here. Uh, it'll be here before you know it. Make sure you register. It's absolutely free to attend. It will be January 9th, 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com. And I'm going to show you some of the different earrings that you will be able to create that you will learn how to create. So this is the free earring design. You will get this little heart that has this little loop on it so you can connect other hearts or you can add a thread tassel to this. You can uh, put them on little dangles or a little stud with a loop. Both of those uh, earring hardwares will be included in the kit. You don't have to go searching for all these jump rings and things. It's really convenient in the kit with the thread and everything that you need. Super cute to make these out of all different colors or you can make them out of the same color. You don't have to connect all three. You can just do two. You can even just stitch out one. So cute, love that. Now this earring design has the free heart and then a different heart with a butterfly in it. And those are connected with a thread tassel. Sheila is also gonna give you tips for creating thread tassels, um, using your sulky thread so that it all coordinates um, so that it doesn't tangle, so that it looks really beautiful and nice and makes these even more of a statement piece. Love them. Uh, here is another way of looking at the design. So this is another heart design, but it has a flower inside. And then you can see she's added a jump ring to the bottom and then a little gem. So totally different way of dressing these up. You can add little gems onto the parts of the flower as well, hot fix crystals, 
all kinds of ways to make these as fancy or as understated as you wish. Here is that same uh, heart design, but n with no jump ring attached at the bottom. So you can see it's just got a finished edge at the lower edge of the heart and the thread colors are changed a little bit so that it's a purple flower inside of the red heart. And then here we have this same design again, but in a different colorway using the same thread palette. So lots of different combinations. You can create so many different earrings, give them to all of your friends and they all look different and they can all speak to the friend's personality. Here's that butterfly design attached to the small freebie heart design with another little gem charm added to the D ring or excuse me, the jump ring, <laughs> D ring, that would be a huge earring. And then here we have it done the opposite way. So you've got your butterfly heart and then the freebie heart and then another thread tassel. And you can see there's two different jump rings added to the bottom so that that thread tassel has its own little uh, circle, right? Very, very creative. Here is the freebie heart design just sewn out on its own. So if you want something a little more understated, uh, you can go with a small heart design, put it on this stud that has a convenient little loop to hold the top of the freestanding lace. And this would be a really great gift for maybe a younger person on your gift list or for Valentine's Day or a birthday or something like that. Um, or if, you know, big earrings aren't your thing, this is still a way to wear them. Um, and as I said, be a little bit more understated about it. And then here are just a couple of other variations. So you can see there are so many earrings that you can create after you understand the technique, how these are made from the designer herself, how she puts them together, her thought process for the designs, and everything you need is in this convenient kit. It is on sale starting today, so you can grab it up at the special webcast price and get everything bundled together for the low, low price. I believe it's $39.99. I'm gonna need to double check that because I'm always doubting myself. I don't want to give you the wrong information. The design collection is $19, okay? So if you want just the design collection without the kit, that's $19. If you want the kit that comes with the design collection, it's $39.99. So for $20 more, you're getting all the thread, the needles, and the stabilizer included, plus all of this hardware for only $20 more. So you might as well grab up the kit because it's kind of like a no brainer. You don't have to go searching for all of these items. You will have everything that you need on hand so that you can create a bunch of earrings. And I'm really glad to have Sheila back. She did our freestanding lights um, or freestanding lace tea lights using a combination of felty applique and freestanding lace techniques. And we did these last year around um, Easter timing or spring timing. And we made these little tea light lanterns with spring motifs. You can still find that webcast at sewingonline.sulky.com if you missed it. We also still have a very small amount of kits for that project um, still available at sulky.com. But I'm so happy to have her back. She brings this really fantastic energy. She has a great teaching style. If you missed that other webcast, please join us for this one because you will love hearing from Sheila, learning everything that she um, has really built a lot of her business on these earring designs. So she is really the authority when it comes to this. So I'm really, really glad to have her back with us for another event in 2024. All right, Leslie says you can also string these together. A bracelet could be made from the hearts too um, and would look really pretty in a variegated rayon. That is a great idea. Um, Crystal says perfect stud earrings. I don't wear danglers, but I have friends and family that do. Yeah, so with this collection, you'll get an earring design for you and then some others that you can really play around with and have fun and gift those away. So really great idea. 
All right. Uh, Gail says, I love the Easter tea lights that I made. Great designs. Yeah, that, that was a really fun project that I had never seen anything like that before. So I was really glad that she developed that for us and for all of you. Um, and that was a really, really great time. So I hope you will all join us for our lovely earrings webcast, January 9, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Add that one to your library at sulky.com. And we will go ahead and notify you before we go live so that you don't have to remember that with the hustle and bustle of the holidays. You just have it in your library and you're ready to go after the first of the year. Also, make sure you are registered for New Year's Eve so that you can grab up your Veronica pattern, grab up your design files, figure out which design you want to create on New Year's Eve so that you are ready to go, ready to roll, ready to make your new bag. And start the new year off with a project already completed. Isn't that a great way to start the new year? I think so. All right. So thanks for joining me today, everybody. It's been a blast. And I will see you next week on another So What, which is going to be the day after Christmas. So I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag and tell you that I have an amazing sale up my sleeve for all of you who choose to join me on the day after Christmas, so what? It'll be another great time where we can come together, we can uh, discuss how the holidays went and how your handmade gifts were received. And uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Merry Christmas to all of you who celebrate and um, we will come together after the holidays. Have a lovely rest of your day.